number eight. My name is Bill Hartley from St. Luke, Santa Rosa, and uh, continuing our Advent vlog, going through the book of 1 Peter. I hope that's been encouraging to you. It's so clear in Peter's mind, this New Testament writer, that our hope should be set completely on the return of Christ. And that's what Advent is all about, is keeping our hope set. And yesterday we talked about verse 13 of chapter 1, where he said, Preparing your minds for action, be sober-minded, and to set your hope fully on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. We, we could start thinking that preparation for the coming of Jesus is all something that takes place in your mind, just focusing your mind. But then the next verses take it into the practical realities of living your life appropriately in light of the fact that Jesus is coming back soon. So as soon as he says, set your hope fully, he says this in verse 14 of chapter 1. As obedient children, don't be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. As obedient children, don't be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. See, now our mind has been changed. We are sober-minded. We are thinking thoughtfully and thoroughly about what it means to be a follower of Christ. Now we have the mind of Christ. Now we have the Holy Spirit who opens our capacity to see and to hear the Word of God. But before, we had what he called our former ignorance, and that we used to live according to the passions of that ignorance. In other words, you have a flesh that cries out and says, please feel, I want to feel things. I want to be pleased. I want fleshly pleasures and that in our former ignorance, we would have thought, oh yeah, we, we need to fulfill those as much as possible. But now as we prepare for the coming of Christ, we are no longer, we're obedient children. We obey what the scriptures say, and that means we aren't conformed to those passions anymore. Instead, we're conformed more and more to the passions of Christ, the heartbeat of Christ, the priorities of Jesus. So specifically what he says here is, as he who called you is holy, it's verse 15, as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. So it's not just your mind, but it's your conduct. It says, since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, that's what's happening when Jesus returns again. Conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile. And here we are again with this idea of we are we are people in exile. We're not even in our home. We're longing to get back to our home. So how do we live now that we're in this strange place longing for heaven? How do we live? We live as obedient children, not conformed to this world around us, which would tweak us around and have us falling after all kinds of idols and fleshly desires. Instead, we are conformed now to obedience to our Father, not the former ignorance but now a prepared, sober mind ready for the coming of Christ because we're exiles. So as you continue to walk through this exile road, remember, well, verse 18, let's wrap it up with this. Knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers. You were ransomed. That means you were like a hostage, but God bought you. The scripture says you are no longer your own. You're bought with a price. So who do you live for? Do you live for the one who used to be your kidnapper? Or do you live for the one who has bought you? The one who has bought you is also returning to reward you for your deeds. And he's going to judge impartially everybody. But we are going to be found righteous because of Jesus. We long for the coming of Christ. Walk accordingly. Talk to you tomorrow. In you, Lord Jesus, in your soon return, come through the star. Our hopes in you, Lord Jesus, cause our hearts to turn to.